Welcome to Rift 101. I'm Destiny. We'll be doing a support uh, solo queue live commentary. Uh, there'll be a lot of me talking about why I'm doing these things and hopefully it'll give you some context on how to improve yourself. I see a lot of people who, who don't use their ban. I think it's, I think you should always use your ban. I think just banning something you don't like to play against is the best way to go. Like if you suck playing against Blitzcrank, then it's fine, like just ban it. So I, I'm actually not sure who the support is. Um, I'm going to guess that it's Pantheon support. I have to be very careful of when he jumps in because I can flay it quite easily. Uh, he doesn't have Aftershock, so he's quite easy to kill. Um, so my first thing that I'm gonna do is stand in this bush. I'm not really afraid of anyone going on me here. Uh, I just want to get vision for the boys level one, see if anyone invades us. Uh, they have cleanse on Ash, so it's gonna be quite annoying. So if I hook and Ezreal exhaust, she can cleanse both. So it's quite annoying. I think Kane pinged us because he wants a ward. Yeah, he wants a ward. He doesn't want to get buffed to buffed. So I'm just going to ward for him. Uh, so I'm starting Flay. I want to hit the wave because I want priority. My Kane's pathing to bot side. I can walk up and look for a Flay here. Like I said, this guy doesn't have Aftershock. I could have been all in just then. My Ezreal is not playing accordingly right now. So it looks like we're not going to get priority in this lane. Uh, I think my Ezreal played a bit too passive. It should be a trade one for one. They don't have heal. It's actually quite worth for me if Ezreal does not die. Okay, Ezreal somehow died. So now we've hit level two. You want to try and get melees if cannon is not up. So now I'm going to last hit this cannon on the last bit of health. We want to build a slow push because our cane's passing down. And we can look for a dive or we can just pressure them if they walk up. If they look for last hits, we can look for the all in now, now that we have the stacking wave. Okay, Pan Lee Sin's here. Okay, so Lee Sin path top to bot two. Kane wants bot scuttle, but we need help getting prior if he wants it. I'm pinging my XP so then he knows when I hit three. Okay, now that I've hit three. Kane's vasing. He's looking for the... Okay, Pamp should die here. I'm gonna look for Ash. She has flash. Okay, she must have flashed on the Ezreal. I'm gonna DM the cannon and push the wave. So we wanna go for a reset right now. Going for the plates is a little bit greedy because our tempo will be bad. So if we stay and get this plate, they will get pushed. They can stack a wave. Uh, I can look for a row mid or something now. So you wanna push in the wave when you wanna get a reset. So after a kill, like this Ezreal had gold to spend, he wanted a tier. So it makes sense for us to push in the wave and look for the reset. So now I look at both solo laners and see that mid self is low and they're going on Lee Sin. Nice, my cane. What a legend. Mid solo kill maybe? Oh my God. I have Faker on my team or what? Maybe Kane can come in for the kill. I'm coming in too. I want to give Kane the kill. I want to give Kane the kill. So that's why I'm, I'm not going to KS it. He can push in the wave without me. Uh, you can decide the roam if your wave is good. Uh, for this instance, uh, bot wave, we got the push in and based. So my marksman was like, my Ezreal was quite safe for me to roam there. So it's just knowing if your AD carry needs help or not. So this is a warding trick. You can ward here and you go over the wall. Now I know that they have a pink there. So using it on this bridge is really good for, to get info. Hopefully I can land in Kanan. I want it. Oh, uh, I missed time to my flare. I played aggressive there because I think we're stronger 3v3. And it did work out. It could have went better. Oh my, Kane misplayed. Okay, nice. Uh, so I'm going boots of swiftness. It's good versus Ash. It's very cheap. It's better than mobility boots now that it's 600 gold not 700 for Mobius. So whenever we have pressure in bot lane, uh, I can enable my jungler by moving with him. 
Uh, he's very strong. He can literally kill everyone in the game right now. So I want to get this bot push here. I'm going to look at what he's doing and play accordingly. Okay, we have bot push. They're fighting at Herald, so I'm going to move. I'm constantly looking at what my laners are doing. I think we can still contest, but my team is scared. So I'm just going to back off. Uh, nobody's moving. So I'm just going to get vision in the jungle while I have time. I'm going to ping Pantheon on six so they know. I'm um, just staying in lantern distance so Ezreal can do as much damage as he can. I'm going to look for the dematerializer on the cannon. I get wards off this and Kane might be able to dive. They are quite low. Even if Lee Sin is here, I think we can do something. I don't have flash, but I can look for hook. Okay, LeBlanc is moving. I'm just going to hit the tower, use my dematerializer. I think Kane can do something here, but I think he's a bit afraid. So I'm on tank on the tower. I'm going to hold it with my aftershock and then jump off. Unfortunately, LeBlanc did not tank for him. I think the best way to look for Thresh Hooks is to know if they have Flash and if they're in the animation of a spell. So with Pantheon's W, he, had, he does have like that little bit of buffer time where he's in the air. So I knew he was going to W the cane, so I instantly threw out the hook on where he was going to land. So I think just being very mindful of the very small interactions will help you hit skill shots. It just comes with time and practice, uh, especially with a lot of like Flash predictions that people do. Uh, it's just knowing and playing the game. Uh, the more times you do it and the quicker reaction speed you have, the better. So I am building a Zeke's. I think Zeke's is a very good item on Thresh. Uh, you want to get as much CDR because your cooldowns will be very low for the hooks and the lanterns. Uh, I am going to go Knights of our second. Uh, so I have a lot of armor against them. A lot of CDR. I'm going to build Zeke's first though. So I decided to go for the Kindle Dam for the CDR and the health. Makes me really tanky. Uh, it's very cheap. A lot of players were doing this build at Season 7 Worlds uh, and Season 8. Uh, it's just a really good build. So my role in the game right now is to get vision on objectives. Uh, I want to get wards on Herald. Right now, Herald is spawning in 40 seconds. I've pressed tab. This Aatrox will live. Uh, he was out of position. So I've just used a lot of wards on the map. Uh, I saw Aatrox was flanking us. So now we have a lot of control on top side. We should be looking for side lane plays like a dive or the Herald here. Um, my Malphite died bot, but should be okay. I'm just going to hit the vision plant right now and get a deep ward. I think this Aatrox should die here. I look to land in an Ezreal. So we gave up a mid wave for this dive, but it was worth. So generally, rule of thumb is to get the wave, get vision, look for side lane play or back to the mid wave. Uh, keeping priority is very important. In your map state, you want to be in a good state to create plays. Uh, the dragon is spawning in a minute. So I'm most likely going to base. I will have tempo on the map because their death timers are quite long. So tempo means that I will I have pace, I will get there first before them. So I want to walk into this river, get some vision for the Drake. Uh, my role is to help Ezreal get mid priorities with my lantern and just look for picks with the jungler. Our jungler is really fed right now. If I play around with him, we can pretty much take over the game. Uh, their Pantheon's kind of inting, it's kind of running it down. Uh, but it looks like the game's going very good for us right now. Uh, every lane is winning. Uh, we have control of every objective. So Kane has decided to base, so I'm going to play according to this and we're going to look for a mid dive instead of going for the Drake. I may have to land on him because he used his W. So now I'm pathing to Nash. Nash is in two minutes. LeBlanc is basing. Uh, we can look for picks here, so I'm going to ping the boys. Uh, Kane has decided to stay and everyone wants to farm jungle camps right now. I'm going to ping the mid wave because I want to get mid priority to get vision. Uh, I'm going to walk here. I might be able to find Zoe. Uh, LeBlanc did show, so he should go in here. I want to be watching mid as well to see what my Ezreal is doing. 
because I don't want my Ezreal getting caught while I'm doing all this. I'm just standing in between because I want to lantern Ezreal if they go on him. If Pantheon ults or if Ash arrows. Uh, having a mid wave is very important. The mid ward will show where people are going to move, what they're going to do. So I use this mid ward. So timing flashes, very important as a support. Uh, if they don't have cosmic inside or cooldown boots, uh, it's five minutes. So sticking by that and timing it a lot is, is uh, very important. To let you know what plays you can and can't make. We're going to get this tier two bot tower. I'm going to walk mid. My Ezreal wants to get inhibitor. I don't really do much here bot lane. So it's just knowing what your role is within the game. So I think some of the most important concepts of this game that you can put into your game is the way that I moved around the map for objectives, uh, the way that I looked for hooks and played around my jungler was really good. Once my jungler got ahead, uh, the game was pretty easy. I just finished the game. Uh, unfortunately, level one didn't go our way. Uh, the Presley attack Pantheon uh, kind of got the better of us, but eventually we did outscale. We played out the lane pretty well. We played around our win condition, which was our cane. Uh, we set up the ganks for him and gave him the lead. He took over the game. He helped out mid lane. There was a lot of takeaways from this game, where to place vision, what objectives to play for, when to look for hooks, when you have to play for lantern. There's a lot of circumstances that you need to be mindful in the game, where waves are, where the jungler is, uh, teleport situation. Um, we ran into a lot of circumstances where we had numbers advantage when we were on the map with items and it really went our way. Uh, Aftershock is usually the safest to go. It's just really strong, gives you a lot of armor, a lot of MR, uh, even a little bit of damage in the trade. So. so I'm going for Demolish. I think Font is okay. Font could be arguable. For this set, it's usually second wind or bone plating, but Second wind, like Ash is gonna W, sometimes it's gonna be unavoidable. I think unflinching is very, like some people go overgrowth, but I think unflinching with hex flash is really good because I get tenacity and slow resistance. So it's really good versus Ash actually. actually. I go dematerializer. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand why dematerializer is so strong. It is because you can instantly one shot a cannon and that's really OP. If you need to reset, you can one shot a cannon. If you wanna dive and fast push, you can DM. It's just helps you get the push in or it helps you get the reset, especially in lanes that it's hard to walk up in. Uh, I could go biscuit, that's arguable, um, but everything else is like kind of whatever. Um, this is all like circumstantial. If you go attack speed rune or adaptive force, it's very playstyle dependent. If you like attack speed and you weave in a lot of auto attacks, then like go for it, you know? I like to go armor and MR, one of each, um, just because it's, it's just good to have both, I think. So hopefully you learned something from this game and stay tuned for more educational content.